Jesus, all that matters, everything else fades away, disappears in the light of Him. Jesus, all that matters, last couple of weeks since the church resumed, we've been looking at a subject titled, You Are Bouncing Back. You're Bouncing Back. We began to explore the life of David from 1 Samuel chapter 30. How David crashed, literally everything about his life came crashing within just one day. Every, he lost everything. He lost everything losable. There was nothing left. Everything came crashing. Everything, he, he, everything disappeared. He lost his properties. Everything he had gathered over the years was lost in a flash. He lost his family. Uh, I definitely, I don't, I, I believe there's definitely no one under the sound of my voice who, had, who has experienced that decree, the dimension of loss. He lost everything. He lost his, his, he lost his parents. He lost his wives. He lost his children. He lost everyone in one day. He lost his properties in one day. And not just him, but his men as well. And then the Bible says that they, they wept. They wept. They wept. They kept weeping. And the Bible says until they had no more strength to weep. I've been there before. They wept until there was no strength left to weep. And then suddenly, the equation changed. The people thought of stoning him. And then that's what, when his... His common sense kicked in. And then he knew what to do next. The Bible says he began to encourage himself. And then I was began to look at himself and say, David, it's not as bad as you think. You are going to recover. You are going to recover from this. It's not as bad as you think. God, in your si God is on your side. Nothing can be against you successfully. You'll make it through this. You'll bounce back from this. He began to encourage and strengthen himself. And then in the process... He spoke to God, which is something naturally should have been done first. But you see, when crisis comes, there are some things that you don't remember, depend on the degree of the crisis. And then he turned to God and began to ask God, God, what should I do next? God says, pursue. You will surely overtake and without fail, you will recover everything. What? I thought everything was lost and lost for good. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. That thing you think is lost for good, God is restoring it back in your life. In the name of, we don't have much time. I won't go into too much pre preamble. And then, of course, they pursued, they overtook, and they recovered every single thing, and even much more than what was lost. So what God is going to give you back will be bigger and better than what you lost. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody ought to speak in tongues. What God will give you back will be bigger and better than what you lost. In the name of Jesus. They mocked you. They ridiculed you. They despise you. But they are going to praise God soon for your sake. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we've been looking at different kinds of restoration. Um, business restoration. Career restoration. And then last week we looked at spiritual restoration. Um, especially when you're in a position where your, your fellowship with God is no longer what it used to be. Um, you've allowed the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and all the distractions to overtake and then crowd out your, your fellowship with God. And it's no longer as sweet as it used to be. So we talked about spiritual restoration, how you can be restored back to God spiritually, and how it is that that's the foundation of everything. If that area is missing, nothing else can work, especially for a child of God. Because that is your foundation. That is a solid rock upon which you stand. Hallelujah. David said, I will look up to the hills and west comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning, within the few minutes time we have, we are going to be looking at uh, ministry restoration. Ministry restoration. And in that context, I'm not talking about ministry as a church. I'm talking about you as an individual. Because every child of God has a ministry. A ministry is basically 
you know, service. What God has called you to contribute in his body. Your service. To minister means to serve. The word minister in the scripture is the word diakonos, which is um, a minister or a servant, rather. A servant. You are a servant. And so ministry means service. Glory to Jesus. Classical case is a case of a man called Peter. A man called Peter. A, a day at a time came. I'm not going to read because of time, but it's found in the book of Luke chapter 22 from verse 31 to 34. Jesus told Peter, listen, Peter, I'm looking at you and I can see something about you. Satan has decided to sift you. Satan has decided, has decided to tempt you. He has made a decision to, to wreck your walk with me. But don't worry, I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. Let me, let me, let me read. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. I prayed for you. In other words, there comes a time when, I mean, first of all, who was Peter? Peter was the two I see, was the number two man was the second in command of the most powerful ministry that ever existed. And yet, here was the Lord saying to him, Satan has decided to sift you, but I, I pray for you. So, 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 sometimes, those we think don't need prayer are the ones who really need prayer the most. Is somebody here this morning? Because everybody comes to pastor and say, pastor, pray for me, pastor, pray for me, pastor, pray for me. But the truth is that the pastor himself is the one who needs prayer the most. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. For a logical reason, Jesus said, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. And the principle was exemplified in one of the wars um, Israel had in the Bible. Their opponent told them, told his soldiers, they don't look, don't strike anybody. Just look for the king and strike him. Once you strike the king, the battle is over. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And so logically, 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 the pastor has his own enemy. 